Again, I'd like to wish everybody a happy St. Patrick's Day. Uh, surprisingly, warm weather in Chicago this time of year. 71 degrees. It's amazing. Uh, usually, St. Patrick's Day is uh, really rainy and overcast, which I guess should be <laughs> you know, Irish holiday. Um, but today was very warm. I went to work in today. I came home. And I'm just flipping through these videos, you know, and uh, saw the interview David Miscavige and Ted Koppel. Now I've seen it about twice, two times before, twice before. I didn't, I've never seen the 15-minute segment that they supposedly have in front of that intro to talking with David Miscavige. I'd say David Miscavige gets his ass handed to him in a high hat <laughs> in this interview. Um. Wow, where to start with this guy? The again, what do I always say is the fault of everything. If anything that's bad, the fault is arrogance. And this is probably the most arrogant man. Now I'm sure every Scientologist tuned in to watch this when it was airing, you know, and I think uh Tori Chrisman, Tori Magoo forty four mentions this, you know, that you know, uh everybody watched that and then it was kinda like a letdown for everybody to be like, Oh yeah, he did go to your he goes, you have our Detroit, you know, let's not, he goes, because they, they, you could deduce with the uh, interview or what the kind of piece, 15 minute piece in the beginning is because, you know, I was talking about Scientology and I had its critics and they go to the interview. And he, he goes, well, let's not give the American people the wrong idea. This is not a ramble, random sampling of people. These are, you know, like how the KKK would be to, um, to the to the blacks or you know interviewing neo Nazis about the Jews. Ah, uh, when they do Opus Day, they have critics of Opus Day and Opus Day uh, Islam. They have critics of Islam about it showing both sides. Something that Scientology always says to do, but they never do it. They block, uh, they have a net nanny um, installed on their uh, their parishioners' computers, and I don't even like calling it parishioners. Let's, it's, it's not a religion. And uh, David Miscavige has to lie in there. And, his per, and the, the Scientologists obviously knew he was lying, but thinks it's acceptable. Ted Koppel's a wog, all, you know, you know filthy humans. He's not a Superman, uh, Homo Novus like uh, <clears throat> like David Miscavige or L. Ron Hubbard or uh, Tommy Davidson. No, uh, I'm trying. I got like a hundred topics. I'm trying to think to fit this into you know, 15 minutes. Um, Sorry about that nicotine addiction. Uh, the uh, he goes through and he says, you know, there's allegations they make. Oh, we're we're the most charitable organization in the world. You know, we give more than any religion. And then Ted Cobble asks him, well, the Catholic Church does a lot of charity too. The Catholic Church being the biggest religion in the world. It's only one sect of Christianity, but it's bigger than Islam. And he says, oh no, per capita, per person. Scientology is a minor cult. Now, I could have me and two other guys say, well, we do more, more charity than anybody in the world. Even Scientologists, because 100% of us are doing charity work. What other religion can claim that 100% of their members does charity work? Or... You know, all three of us are priests. We're the most holy religion. Can the Christians, can the Muslims say that? Can the science, you know? Or if you and, let's say if I was a doctor, and me and five other doctors got together and created, we're the most intelligent religion. Because everybody in the religion has a PhD. Yeah, you can't do, see these per capita things are really ridiculous. You per capita. Yeah, it works for some things, but 
it's really easy for people to, to skew it. Because if your religion entitles enslavement of the mind, forced donations, which that means it's a that's an oxymoron, a forced donation. It's not a donation. You're paying for services. Now, Christians may go to a service, and they may pay or they may not. And the New Testament says to give hilarious, you know, leave some say 10%. The Muslims have their charity of, I think, point. 2.5%, but amazingly, most Muslims give well over that to their credit. And I'm not talking about what causes, I'm just saying, uh, giving your own personal um, money that you made uh, to other people freely. You know, say terrorist bombings, but I'm not going to get into that. I don't want to attack that, that issue. Um, then he, uh, he goes into about you know, Ted Koppel actually asked him, well, you know, I heard these tapes of uh, L. Ron Hubbard, you know, where he went to, out to the Van Allen belt and, uh, you know, these spaceships that look like, you know, DC-10s. And, and actually, that's OT-3. That's the wall of fire with the Z News story and all that. David Miscavige says, oh, I don't, you know, I've never heard of that. You know, that, you know, that has nothing to do with Scientology. Yeah, it's one of your main levels, dude. Look it up on the internet now. Of course, this was made in the 90s when uh, I think a, a lot of that stuff was maybe on clambake.com or something like that. But the, uh, so he says, well, you know, the Catholic religion, you know, let's say has, you know, virgin births, which aren't real, and people going up to heaven and all this stuff. And, you know, you can, you know, it's the same thing. And tries to go on and take out and goes, whoa, whoa, wait a second. You were raised a Catholic, right? He goes, yeah. So, well, let's answer this, but no, this is, no, 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 you, you proposed the thing. You said it was the same as Catholicism. Well, Christianity would say that's a faith. That's something that you put your belief in. It's not, there's no proof in it. It's just, you know, you believe it. And uh, so he asks him, well, you're saying it's, <clears throat> those things are on faith? And David Miscavige goes, no, they're not, you know, because science tells you you have to know. It's knowing how to know that. So, <clears throat> you have a religion with no faith. What? <clears throat> it's ridiculous. Like my the other video I made about L. Ron Hubbard. It's ridiculous. You know, L. Ron Hubbard goes out of, the way, out of his way to say it's a science, and then they come in as the United Churches of Florida and take over uh, Clearwater. It's funny, I actually got a friend living down across the bridge from Clearwater. I guess there's a bridge that connects it. This is the craziest place in the world. Looks like a cult. They got this thing. It almost looks like a castle. And Scientology winds up looking so bad with Dave Miscavige playing because he's very defensive. He's always on the attack. He always <clears throat> tries to defer things. What's wrong with this? What we can do for you? And uh, Ted Koppel asks him questions, and he always takes it as an attack. This is how you can know things are called. If you ask honest questions and you get, well, what about that? What? No, I asked you the question. He always tries to, you know, slip out, of, dodge the question, move it to something else, you know. And it's ridiculous when you can go up to somebody and ask, but that doesn't make, if somebody tells you, well, that doesn't make sense. How can this be? You're a Nazi. You're, you know, a hate monger. You're an, a suppressive person, you know. It's... <clears throat> it's really ridiculous the fact that you could, I actually made a video long back uh, on a different channel um, one that's not mine anymore but black liberation theology you know saying well it's actually a fascist movement because once you take communism and you you replace the proletariat with a uh, nation or race that is that's basically the textbook definition of fascism and I got, the, you're a racist, isn't it? from this black supremacist who didn't think whites were allowed to ask questions. We were supposed to be scared and hum I mean, a very strange view to have. Um, <clears throat> not held by any of the uh, any of the civil rights workers because they wanted equality. They wanted civil rights. Uh, but I'm sure this happens in any hate group and any cult. Cults, it's basically what they are, because they're about control, power, and money. 
uh, it's not based on belief. And I know religions go off into that. Don't get me wrong. I mean, there's some things that go crooked, but when the base, when the basic tenet is money, which is that Scientology, you know, the way to make money is in a religion, not writing books. It's L. Ron Hubbard. So this interview just goes on and on to the torture of David Miscavige because he's supposed to be the greatest communicator, you know. You know, that's what, that's what uh, Dianetics is about, is communication. And Ted Koppel, who's, you know, a professional reporter, one of the uh, most widely known, most well-respected reporters, better communicator than David Miscavige, just calmly, coolly, not worked out, just kicks the shit out of him. And not not in a hostile way, and I don't think he was trying to do it in a house. He was just asking honest, direct questions like a reporter should. Now, I don't particularly like or dislike Ted Cobb, but I think this interview is amazing. And I think you can just type in an interview with David Miscavige. It was done by ABC News. Um, and just watch it and just watch uh, David Miscavige destroy himself. And even if you look at him, he's got, you know, they kind of like a uh, haircut, almost like a 50s haircut. And a really cheap looking suit, actually. You know, he's there and he's trying to act. And... You know, this, you know, seasoned reporter is just asking questions like a normal person would in a very calm, cool manner, not reactionary, not defensive, not, you know, aggressive. And just David Miscavige is just getting his ass beat by himself, basically, because he's, each time they ask a question, I mean, each time Ted Cobble asks a question, David Miscavige goes on in his wild allegations, oh, we're supposed to be in Alaska and Siberia. I mean, it sounds like a it sounds like a conspiracy theorist talking, but I guess it, that's what Scientology really mass produces is um, uh, conspiracy theorists. The, the whole universe and matter and history and science is all one big conspiracy. This is all an illusion. Now, Scientology is a form of Gnosticism. This is modern day Gnostics. What do you have? You have secret knowledge guarded by the few and the elite. And you have to go up levels to get to it. And you, uh, the base belief is that matter is evil and spirit is totally good. Sound familiar? It's Gnosticism. And, uh, yeah, it, the all physical existence. That's why the Gnostics weren't charitable. They didn't want to go out and help people because you couldn't help people by feeding them. You were just prolonging their suffering. You were just giving into their desires. The way to free somebody in the Gnostic idea, the way to film charity, is for them to become enlightened. I don't think somebody can become enlightened if they're starving to death, but oh well. And Gnosticism died out. Because what was Gnosticism praying on? Rich people. And what is Scientology doing? Rich people. So I want you to go back and uh, if you're interested and look at my videos about Gnosticism and look at what Scientology is. Striking similarity. Scientology will die out too. Maybe uh, not as, maybe slower because we've got so much information and there's always new people stumbling in traps. Uh, but I also want to say one last thing. I got uh, a lot of criticism for not only doing Scientology uh, when I first started coming on YouTube. Yeah, I was doing Mormonism, which is also a very harmful thing to America for freedom, you know, especially gay rights. Uh, but I think uh, and that's great for Anonymous that they're so focused and they have only one side, but I think it, you almost become a pawn if you can only talk about that and can't branch out. I mean, I think it narrows perspective a little bit. But I'd like to say Anonymous is doing a great job. Um, keep doing what you're doing. Peace. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Flipping through these videos, you know. And uh, so the interview, David Miscavige and Ted Koppel. Now, I've seen it about twi two times before, twice before. I, I've never seen the 15-minute segment that they uh, supposedly have in front of that intro to talking with David Miscavige. I'd say David Miscavige gets his ass handed to him in a high hat in this interview. 
Um, wow, where to start with this guy? The again, what do I always say is the fault of everything. If anything that's bad, the fault is arrogance. And this is probably the most arrogant man. Now I'm sure every Scientologist tuned in to watch this when it was airing. You know, and I think uh Tori Chrisman, Tori Magoo forty four mentions this, you know, that you know, uh everybody watched that and then it was kinda like a letdown, but everybody did, Oh yeah, he did go to your He goes, You have our Detroit you know that's not, he goes, because they, you could deduce with the uh, interview. Again, I'd like to wish everybody a happy St. Patrick's Day. Uh, surprisingly, warm weather in Chicago this time of year. 71 degrees, it's amazing. Uh, usually St. Patrick's Day is uh, really rainy and overcast, which I guess should be, <laughs> you know, Irish holiday. Um... But today was very warm. I went to work in today. I came home and I just knew or what the kind of piece, 15 minute piece in the beginning is because, you know, I was talking about Scientology and I had its critics and they go to the interview. And he, he goes, well, let's not give the American people the wrong idea. This is not a ramble, random sampling of people. These are, you know, like how the KKK would be to, um, to the to the blacks or you know interviewing neo Nazis about the Jews. Ah, uh, when they do Opus Day, they have critics of Opus Day and Opus Day. Uh, Islam, they have critics of Islam about it it's showing both sides. Something that Scientology always says to do, but they never do it. They block, uh, they have a net nanny um, installed on their uh, their parishioners' computers, and I don't even like calling it parishioners. That's, it's, it's not a religion. 